It's almost the end of 2021, and it's that time of the year where we can start to look ahead into 2022 to see what awaits us in the gaming community. Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and in this video, I'll be going over several highly anticipated historical strategy games in historical order. And I don't think it's a coincidence that all of these games also happen to be RTS games, or at least RTS as part of said games. Before we get into it, as always, if you enjoy any part of this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, sub to the channel for more videos, turn on bell notifications, not to mention leaving a comment on which games you're most excited for. Now, let's take a dive into the most anticipated historical strategy games of 2022, beginning with Manor Lords. Manor Lords is a medieval RTS simulation game developed by single developer Slavic Magic, taking place from the 11th to 15th centuries. It's scratching several itches for Total War fans and medieval strategy fans alike by combining city management, deep economic systems, and small-scale tactical battles that aim for historical accuracy and repercussions in every step. With city management, you'll be able to freely place buildings wherever you please to present a natural and organic approach to medieval village layouts. You'll assign people jobs, watch their daily lives unfold, and cater to their needs of food, water, and comfort. The economic system is rather robust thus far, with several types of raw resources at your disposal across multiple territories. These goods can be further refined into crafted materials that you can sell to merchants and build up wealth, or increase the luxury of your people. Crop rotation, forest management, and resource logistics across multiple regions are all features you'll need to consider when you play. The battles themselves are smaller than most other strategy games, but don't let that disappoint you. Manor Lord's battles will contain a wide array of toggled formations for all unit types. Spear wall and forced retreat for infantry, volley or fire at will for archers, and wedge formations for your knights. Terrain, weather, and morale will play huge parts in the success of your battles as well, and you'll need to use everything at your disposal to ensure that your army is standing at the end of the day and not your enemies. Manor Lords is looking absolutely amazing, and while we don't have a set date yet, Slavic Magic is hoping to release it into early access in 2022. Next up is Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign by Black Sea Games and published by THQ Nordic. While taking place in most of the same time period as Manor Lords, this game starts a bit later as an error of focus, taking on the 12th to 14th centuries across three different start dates. This next installment in the Grand Strategy Knights of Honor series comes 15 years after the first one, where the premise remains the same. Take control of a country and use diplomacy to make alliances and negotiate peace deals, utilizing economic strategies to manage your provinces, create trade hubs and specialized resource production, and of course we can't forget using your military to take over Europe by force through specialized units, general upgrades, and real-time battle tactics. Knights of Honor 2 looks to be an evolutionary step forward into the series as well. Invasions aren't so cut and dry, especially when your allies get involved. Your knights now have more flexibility with their designated roles, but are also much more specialized and important in how you use them. Trading, diplomacy, spies, and espionage are all much more in-depth than in the first game. While we have yet to see actual gameplay footage of battles, the trailer is reminiscent of Total War-style tactics something I hope can deliver to give some competition in that area. And let's not forget the improvement to graphics while remaining true to the Knights of Honor thematic style. The game is sticking to the grand strategy genre at its core, and I for one am incredibly excited to get my hands on it to see how it plays. Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign was originally supposed to release in 2020, so let's hope that 2022 is the year where we finally ascend to the throne. While not necessarily moving beyond Thrones entirely, let's take a look at Victoria 3. Victoria 3 is being developed by Paradox Interactive, known for its long-standing reign with grand strategy games such as Europa Universalis 4, Crusader Kings 3, and Stellaris. Victoria 3 takes place over 100 years between 1836 to 1936, sees the player as the head of their country, leading them through the entire game. Vicky 3 has some serious depth to it already, where every single person in the game is fully represented across the entire globe, and it's feasible to see billions of people by the end of the game, each with their own education, jobs, families, incomes, cultures, and religions. It's your population that has real sway in how you run your country, as each pop has political and ideological associations. 
which can either help or hinder your progress, depending on how you play. Disgruntled pops can rebel or even worse, leave your country for better fortunes elsewhere. Not to mention deter your ability to pass laws, develop technology, and further the nation as a whole. Now, unlike previous Paradox games, where war is the primary means of expansion and end-game goals, Vicky 3 takes a drastic turn away from that model and instead places a very heavy emphasis on diplomacy, your economic abilities, and social issues. You'll have to balance all three in order to get ahead, and it's only really when diplomacy fails that war will break out. And if that happens, it can and will have drastic effects on your economy. Your soldiers had jobs and families back home. If they die, those jobs are lost, need to be replaced, families are now left without a source of income, and the political parties they were aligned with may not look too favorably on you anymore. Can you juggle everything that Victoria 3 has to throw at you and build a successful and enduring empire? Guess we'll have to wait and see. Victoria 3 has no official release date yet, but judging by Paradox's usual development cycle, we could be seeing a release date somewhere around mid-2022. Keeping to the Victorian era, but in an alternate historical way, is Frostpunk 2, developed and published by 11-Bit Studios, and the unexpected but extremely excitable sequel to the highly acclaimed Frostpunk. We only have a teaser video for this simulation survival city builder, but the information on the Steam page and what is known gets me more excited. Set 30 years after the end of the first game, the age of Steam has passed, and now oil leads the way as humanity's newest salvation in the frozen wasteland of Frostland. As the leader of a resource-hungry metropolis, new challenges now await you that are a step beyond the more basic survival mechanics of the original Frostpunk. This second installment in the Frostpunk series will look to be a much more ambitious title than its predecessor and hopes to be more than just a sequel. There's a new layer to several aspects of the game, be it politics with more factions to contend with, or the social side with the freedom to shape society and your own city to how you see fit, even technological progress. And of course, you'll have to reap the repercussions if things go astray. And rest assured, they'll go astray. Frostpunk is one of my favorite strategy games of all time, so you bet I'm looking forward to playing Frostpunk 2. However, there is no set release date for the game, but I'm banking on sometime late 2022. Let's move forward in time for these last two games, which both take place during World War II, starting with Company of Heroes 3. Announced earlier this year with an open alpha campaign test, Company of Heroes 3 is in development by Relic Entertainment and published by Sega, and it looks to build on the franchise in fresh new ways. The heaviest shift in those line of changes is the addition of a Total War-esque style campaign map, where armies travel across the map in a turn-based style format, with the typical Company of Heroes style real-time battles taking place when two armies meet. The campaign takes place in an entirely new theater of war, the Mediterranean, where your forces will square off in vary terrain like the mountains of Italy or the deserts of Africa, bringing in new forms of reconnaissance and campaign planning in order to gain the upper hand across these new landscapes. The campaign map also has a form of resource extraction, allowing you to build armies composed of various units to tackle the appropriate enemies thrown at you across the campaign. While sticking mostly to the same format with real-time battle side of the game, there will be new battle tactics involved, including flanking penalties, breaching mechanics for infantry, and advantages based on terrain height, not to mention a diverse array of factions and units that will take part in the action. Company of Heroes 3 will of course feature single player for the campaign and multiplayer online PvP as a franchise standard. And while the latest multiplayer alpha test still showed a lot of work ahead, I think Relic has what it takes to make a great new addition to the Company of Heroes franchise. Like Frostpunk 2, Company of Heroes 3 has no official release date, so fingers crossed it'll actually release late 2022. Our last game, but certainly not least, is Mana of War 2, developed by Bestway and published by 1C Entertainment. Announced out of the blue just a few weeks ago, Men of War 2 is the successor to the extremely popular World War II strategy simulation war game, Men of War. It's been seven years since Men of War Assault Squad 2, so to see a new Men of War game in development is extremely exciting. Like all of these next installments in this video, Men of War 2 is going above and beyond to bring about a new experience to the game. With two full campaigns as the Soviets and Americans, all new terrain with stunning visuals, and a completely reworked sound design system. Not to mention three total factions with 45 battalions and over 300 vehicles between them all. Men of War 2 is shaking up the franchise with new tactics, destructible physics, 
and a whole host of new strategic advantages and obstacles. It will feature multiplayer and PvP and co-op modes where you'll face off against advanced AI across skirmish and challenge maps, planning and executing attacks together as a team. Lastly, Men of War wouldn't be where it is now without some truly incredible mods. And Men of War 2 looks to keep that tradition with full mod support between a special level design system and modding tool set to create your own tactical map to play on. This one's looking good, and I look forward to seeing gameplay footage in the future. Men of War 2 is slated for a broad 2022 release. And that will wrap up the most anticipated historical strategy games for 2022. We've got a fantastic lineup. This year looks to be pretty heavy for strategy games, and I'm not complaining in the least. Thank you for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed the selection brought to the table. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, sub to the channel, and turn on bell notifications. Let me know what your favorite historical strategy game of 2022 is by leaving a comment, as well as any other strategy games you're looking forward to as well. This is Havoc, and I'll see you all in the next video.